was her masterpiece. She was so proud of it, the space, the concept, the people. I look around and I see a lot of Kuploris' children. That's what it's all about, Linda's indomitable spirit lives on in each and every one of you. Marisol, Annie, Bean, Jeff, Eagle, Johnny, Jocelyn, Betsy, Rita, Stephen, Simon, Jr. You know who you are. There are literally, literally hundreds of you, and now they're children. I was a brash young cameraman from New York. Big ego, big temper, big mouth, big aspirations. <laughs> That's not so big. Uh, Vicky brought Linda around to produce with me. We fought like cats and dogs. Linda, I can get a crew faster and better and cheaper, and what are all these lights for? What do you mean you want to silk the whole set and light it with arcs and fake back like sunset at noon? Damn it. What's the, way, what's the best way back to the airport? La Chiniga or Solpovidia? <laughs> I, I couldn't drive, so it was a way to Vicky, what do you think of the cub? Linda, what an asshole. <laughs> but that film, it was love at first sight. We just didn't know it yet. Everybody else did. How did she handle me? Well, she had Jack DeSort to train with. Yeah. She was resilient, forgiving, and loving. She tamed me, straightened me out. Well, she tried. The Coop House, as Jonathan Katz called her. It was the best of times. We thought we ruled the world, and we ruled Market Street. Anyway, what's left of that now is some great memories and all you could glorious peeps thriving, carrying on in her footsteps. Right on. So many stories, Linda could talk story. Oh, yeah. She never let facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> I'm pissed that Kellyanne Conway gets credit for all too facts. <laughs> no way. Linda could talk the legs off a table, sell toothpicks to a toothless man, ice to an Eskimo, and Danny to the agency. <laughs> At wrap dinners, I'd be exhausted. She would take over. I knew the stories by heart, so I could check out to utter the prerequisite, uh-huh, uh -huh, oh yeah, it's crazy, for sure. <laughs> but once in a while, the stories would change in setting or character or outcome. Wait. That's a New Zealand story set in Paris <laughs> with the Barbados ending. <laughs> wow. No one can wind one out like that. <laughs> Taught me how. Taught me so much. I miss her so much. Every morning I wake up and whenever something's bothering me, I think, call Linda. If anything is wrong, you call Linda. If you need advice, even if you don't want it. You call Linda. A favor, Linda. A laugh, Linda. Anything. So I think, call Linda. Then my mind says, you can't. She's gone. I get sad. But five minutes later, I think, call Linda. Again and again and again. No, dude, she's dead. I can't get it through my head. For so long, I relied on her. I'm just not sure what to do. It's messed up. Anyway, I have so many stories. But I'll only tell one. You can look for the rest in paperbacks. <laughs> Linda was always striving, pushing me, you need to shoot spec, dress nicer, socialize, be cooler. <laughs> My reel was a little crusty. I was in a lull. Linda says she's bringing a creative over that's hot and cool and young to get work. I'd rather stay in Malibu and surf, I thought. Anyway, I come in, the office has rose petals all over, PAs dressed up, music, the nine. I hated that shit. Linda shows up, her neck is twisted up. I'm like, Linda, you look like Quasimodo, no one's gonna hire the handicap. She says, I slept funny. I go, we better get you a massage, scurrying all around the office immediately. 
We go upstairs to my office and I continue to grump out. We go over again and again all the things she wants me to say and be and to be cool and get work. Expletives abound from me. <laughs> New York poetry. Danny's ugly twin, as Jocelyn would call me on that. <laughs> A guy is brought up to our office. Linda Barry looks up. Here, rub here, right here. The guy says to them, what's wrong with you? Harder, harder. The guy sheepishly works on her neck while I brood in the corner. Linda's all over him because he isn't doing a good job. At the door now is another guy with a massage table. <laughs> Linda looks up. Who are you? I'm the masseur to the guy rubbing her neck. Answers somewhat sheepishly, somewhat violated. Um... I'm the creative director. <laughs> we didn't get that account. <laughs> Linda's here today, no doubt, and she wants us all to strive to help the Aina, the earth, and to practice aloha, Amen. to give without expecting anything in return. Gone but never forgotten, my best friend and partner in crime, and hurry before I cry. Thanks, everyone, for coming. She would be happy. Can you hear her laughing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.